Namaste and welcome to class. Today I would like to open a space for contemplation on the good rebel and in the bad rebel. Saying that, we need to first understand that all the forces of prana, all the life force, is indestructible and that is through the misconceptions and the ignorance that we twist that force in certain values and certain concepts that are not working. So in principle you cannot get rid of anything and that's something that we need to start with in the process of inner observation. That you cannot change anything about yourself. All you can do is to liberate the life force from any misconceptions, from any behaviors or no right actions that have been operating in your system as a way of understanding reality, but is not true. So saying that is very subtle to enter into the prana and say you have been hatched by my belief systems, by my insecurities, by my childishness, by my ignorance. And with that polishing, with that awareness that is based in compassion, then you can liberate all these tensions in the nervous system. The other thing is, before we enter into the good revel and the bad revel, is that anything that you observe immediately become united. You don't need any further doing if you are observing sincerely your control and your mechanism and your illness and you are opening the space to observe it from a 360 degrees. You just not observe once and take for granted you know everything. You observe that and in that observation get one. It gets unity. It gets healed. It gets flow and that's all it needs but the mind is the one that it wants to do something more okay so be careful with that anything that you observe in neutrality and sincerity with no desire of changing in any way gets into state of unity into state of harm harmony okay so let's now talk about the good Revel and the bad revel. The good revel is the one that have awareness and kindness. It's the one that understand that everything is a matrix and naturally doesn't want to belong to that collective matrix. Simply because it's an illusion. Simply because it has certain trajectory of memories and experiences from other lives or this life that tells what is the matrix, what is the truth, what is the reality. So you see in most spiritual teachers and realized persons that since childhood they have a strong will, they have an inner conviction and they don't agree with anything who wants to pollute it or turn it around or manipulate it. That's the good rebel. And that good rebel, it gives you also a sense of certitude and protection because the rebel comes from the protective mind. And when the 
protective mind is balanced, is not reacting. It protects instead of defending everything. Everything have an opinion, everything is not right, everything have a justification. Anything that comes your way is, is you're opposing it. That's not the good rebel. It's just a reactive thing. It's the activist. And that you can get lost. Because it's part of the protective mind. But the good rebel protects your higher self. It protects your convictions. And through your experiences, you can mature if those convictions are based in compassion or are based in self-interest. So the good, the good rebel is very helpful because it helps your inner security, your inner conviction, your inner value. You know with no reaction, with no opinions, with no um, justifications, you know what you know. And you know that you don't need to pollute that in any way. So I have also give you the glimpse of the bad rebel. The bad rebel is like a child that is saying no to everything. Especially anything that makes you cross limits. I see this dealing with or guiding people that say, well, what you need is to speak honestly to your wife, for example. You need to learn to negotiate. Oh no, she's going to react, she's not going to like this, I'm going to die, this is no good. Or they say, oh yes, yes, I will say, I will do it. And they don't. Knowing that that's what it needs for advancement. So the rebel, the, the bad rebel is very reactive. And it's the one that wants control over you. He wants controls over your life. Just have the image of the two-year-old child. The child that is, the mother say, eat your vegetables. No, I don't want them. Maybe later. Put sauce on it. Put conditions on it. Maybe if my brother does, then I do it. So that is more in a form of a tantrum. And that tantrum is underneath any form of control. Because it's that tantrum that is controlling you from moving into a more mature state of perception. So to heal the rebel is very important because without the rebel you won't have any conviction, convictions, any security. You are not able to discern where is danger, where to accept and not what to accept. And mostly the rebel has a strength from the third chakra that knows that it can transcend any pain. It's like a warrior. Say, well, I got hurt and I recover. It relies in the faith and in the trust that it can heal itself without any pretentiousness or going into danger to prove that that is true. The inner revel is around the higher self. The higher self send the information from your heart and the inner rebel digest that 
as the safest way to put that emotion. So the good rebel is not contradicting or arguing with the commands of the higher self. It's not distorting it. Now, because in our society we are like sheep, our inner rebel feels that it needs to increase in order to survive. So the opinions and the arguing and, and the rustles among communities, societies and families increase as a way of saying, I want to be me. I want to express myself. I want to be unique. So it's important to really contemplate on this, the good rebel and the bad rebel. The good rebel, when it's in action, you feel cozy and protected and strong, convinced. No, I don't need to do what society is telling me to every single detail. I can apply certain rules to keep the social order, but I am not, you know, um, following certain education or certain health protocols or anything that I know is not for me. It doesn't work. It's just a game. So you should not fear your good rebel. The opposite. Trust it. On the other hand, you need to liberate the bad rebel from your life force. Because the bad rebel don't have a life by itself. It sucks the life out of you. It wants to give you more mental chatting, more conversations, more mm, polarities. This is good, this is not good, I should follow this, I'm not going to obey it. What she says is not right. That is not the way to upgrade yourself, to have the rebel that is just the strength of the life force. So when that exorcism, if I can put it out word, out of you, prana, out of your life force happens. You gain something very special and is the city of no need to feel that you need any protection. You become amicable to all the creation and to what all exists. When the inner bottle disappears, when you are surrendering that kind of control, that kind of restlessness inside, a beautiful friendliness comes to yourself and to everything around you. Imagine, just imagine, where you don't need to protect yourself from anything. No fear, no love, no nothing. You are like a transparent rice paper that allows the energy to pass through. Because there is a deep trust in the life force that restores, that purifies, that leads you, that loves you. It's just a trust, like a child. You're in complete state of surrender. We no need of any protection, of any proof. All your shields just drop. 
the cells then start vibrating inside your body and harmonizing within themselves, creating a great orchestra, create a great harmony within. So spot your inner rebel. Once you offer that conflict inside, you are friend of the whole creation. It's not complicated, but it's subtle. Noticing what you are, if you're, somebody talk to you, that's your homework, somebody talk to you, notice the cataloging inside, the discernment inside. Or if you have a teacher, let's say, I advise you to do this, and you go start battling with it, the, the indications, and you start arguing, arguing inside, or doing the opposite, then you know that the rebel is there, and it's a misplacement. And if it's active, then you know that what are you requesting to you is the lesson of be friendly to creation, to all the cells of your body, to all levels of frequencies, to all levels of awareness. Then the heights and the lows are part of you. They are part of your bubble of life. So take notes and I will see you in our next class. Namaste and thank you for sitting with us. Until next time.